Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to head over to America once again and we've got a collaboration beer to have a look at today that I think will be very, very interesting. One of the breweries involved here I have reviewed before and have been very impressed with and the other one is one that I've never encountered before but they seem to be really quite well respected. They're a sour beer specialist brewery which is always very, very interesting. So for the home brewery then, we are going to go to Alexandria in Virginia and and we're having a look at another beer from Aslan Beer Company, who I've encountered before with the um, the Double Orange Star, if I remember correctly the name of that beer. It was a lovely New England double IPA. But this particular beer is called New Beer Idea Number 1, and it's a double dry hopped New England IPA in collaboration with The Black Project, who are from Denver in Colorado and seem to have a very good reputation, as I mentioned earlier, in the sour beer category. So this is another beer that was very kindly sent to me by Chris Contreras, an American guy who's followed the channel for a little bit. He sent me some ridiculous beers over the last little while, which is massively appreciated. But basically, he sent me this one along with three beers from Treehouse, and he said that this was a really unusual IPA for him, and he was curious to see my take on it and see whether I could compare it to any of the other things that I have. And like I say, I think this one might be a kind of sour um, New England IPA, just, going, uh, just having done the research on both of these breweries, of course. So really curious to see how this one turns out. Comes in at 6.8% ABV and hopefully it's another very very good beer so yeah I really hope that you guys enjoy my take on it as well so anyway as is usual with my reviews then I'll tell you a little bit about the breweries before we taste the beer if you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual links are in the description below that's the brewery website the link to my other reviews that I've done from Aslan Beer Company before and my future reviews that hopefully I can do from the Black Project very first time I'm encountering them as I mentioned there's all the usual social media if you want to see more beer reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel the whole channel of course it has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country city state county prefetch or whatever it is you're interested in do check out the playlists of beers from different countries there is one there for all the american beers that i've reviewed for you that's being added to whenever i get the opportunity and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review it's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is is hugely, hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Aslan Beer Company first off then, since these guys are the home brewery. So Aslan Beer Company are based in Alexandra in Virginia, but they were originally from Herndon, which is a suburb of Washington, D.C. But the company was founded back in 2014 by Andrew Kelly, Kai Leshkovics, and Richard Thompson. And apparently they started home brewing together around 2012 and just took it from there. So they wanted to start the brewery with a 10-barrel system, but they didn't have enough cash to get the infrastructure for this. So they went for a two-barrel nano brewery and sold directly to customers on the premises. And they gradually just expanded the brewery using the modest profit that they were making. But they, they credit a lot of their success to the direct-to-consumer approach that they took and also for seeking feedback on the different recipes that they were producing. In early 2019, though, they closed the doors of their taproom at the Herndon facility uh, in order to move to a new premises in Alexandria, which has a far larger production facility and also a larger taproom as well. And as of October 2019, that new site is open from what I understand and they've brewed around 320 different types of beer, but of course they are mainly known for the New England IPAs but they've also got a good range of other different styles in their portfolios as well. But the name of this brewery comes from the fact that Andrew and Kai are married to two of the three Aslan sisters, while the third sister is married to Richard's brother as well. So they thought that this was, you know, a kind of cool way to carry on their wife's sort of family name, if you like. But um, like I said, a brewery that seems to be getting a hell of a lot of praise at the moment. Hopefully, if when I go back out to the US, I'm not sure if I will have time to make it as far south as DC, but this is definitely one of the breweries. That I would check out if I was down there. When I was in DC back in what, like 20. When would that have been? That would have been like 2008 or something. So it's over 10 years actually since I've been in DC. Um, in fact, yeah, yeah, no, it would have been I. It would have been about 2010 or something like that actually was the last time I was in DC. I've been there like two or three times. Um, but yeah, though, when I was down there, there really wasn't very many. Um, breweries in that kind of area from what I understand and it seems to have kicked off a lot much like New York there's a lot more breweries in New York now than the last time I was over there but um, yeah this is definitely one of the breweries that I would want to check out and a lot of the people that really rave about the New England IPAs are talking a lot about Aslan Beer Company I was really uh, impressed with the double orange star that I had from these guys before so hopefully I can try a few more of their beers at some point in the future they haven't made it neither of these breweries actually have made it to uh, here to Sweden and I've not seen them back 
back home in Scotland either. Um, I got the first Aslan one that I had through the Mikeller Festival in uh, in Copenhagen. Actually, I got that at the Mikeller General Store, which was kind of cool. But um, yeah, that's all you really need to know about Aslan Beer Company for the moment. If you want to learn more, of course, you can check out the brewery website. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on. And if you're interested in all the different beers that they do, you can check out their uh, the the Rate Beer and Untapped pages too. So yeah, let's go on to the Colorado side of this brewery then. So the Black Project, who are formerly known as Black Project Spontaneous and Wild Ales. So these guys are based in Denver in Colorado, which as we know is a very good beer state. Colorado is one of the premier craft uh, beer states, so it was always California and Colorado that we got stuff from over here in Europe. But this company was founded by James Howitt and his wife Sarah, and they started it back in 2014. So James has a degree in microbiology, so he's always been really interested in, uh, in bacteria. And for the brewery, he wanted to create beers using yeasts that basically floated around freely in the Denver air. But much of their brewing involves the use of coal ships of sorts. They've kind of made their own. Um, but this allows spontaneous fermentation of cooled water with yeast that's carried into the water by the air. It comes in in little particles and you've got a kind of filter just over the water. The water is cooled very quickly and put out into this and then the little yeast kind of just settles into it and starts eating the sugar, converting the sugar into alcohol in this sort of cold war actually, spontaneous fermentation. But these days they also forage some of their yeasts from nature and they allow them basically to evolve naturally from batch to batch of the same beer. So each is very, very unique. You're never going to get exactly the same beer from these guys. But initially they were brewing their beers as a side project at the former Future Brewing Company, which was founded by them back in 2014. And it focused on historical recipes, but done with a more modern take. But in 2016, they decided to cease the former Future brand and focus solely on Black Project and their sour beer production. And this was mainly because they started to win some really kind of crazy medals and stuff like this at the Great American Beer Festival for their uh, for their sour beers, actually. So they were very, very well regarded in this category. But James is determined that the, the brewery's beer should not be called like Lambics or called Goises or anything like this. And they should be considered more as a sort of... Um, I'm sort of paraphrasing what he said, but basically he wants them to be considered like a local Denver sour beer, you know, very unique to that kind of area. I guess a little bit like the things you're going to find from... Um uh, brewery Terro and things like that, you know, the Pacific Northwest sours and stuff like that. Um, but the brewery itself is named Black Project because James is an aviation history buff and it's supposed to be a sort of tongue-in-cheek reference to top secret military research projects. But as of October 2019 when I'm filming this review, these guys have produced just over 200 different types of beer under the, the Black Project name. So yeah, as I say, very, very well regarded in... Um, in sour beer circles, if you like. There's some very good breweries in America now that are doing sour things. The Lost Abbey, uh, Brewery Tarot, um there is another one that's gone right out of my head, actually, that I've reviewed for you on the channel before. Um, but I haven't reviewed too many sour beers from America, actually, so it's kind of cool to encounter one of these sour beer projects. Of course, over here in Europe, we can get a lot of the Belgian ones. And, you know, there's a few good sour beer breweries here in Sweden as well. Breakaway um you know, Yelladalen and things like that as well. Um, Urobro Bruegkus, Dugas Brewery do a few different sour things as well. You know, um, there's some really good sour beer breweries out there now, but it's quite cool to encounter a completely dedicated sour brewery over in uh, over in America. So hopefully when I do make it out to Colorado to visit my friend Tabor, um, I'm sure that we'll probably end up going to the Black Project and I'll film a little pardon me out and about video for you as well. But a really interesting brewery to come across this one, a real kind of scientific approach and it's cool to find another brewer who is you know an aviation buff a little bit like me i quite enjoy that my grandpa flew spitfires and things like that so it was quite cool to read that but um yeah really interesting brewery this one that's all you need to know about them for the moment if you want to learn more about the brewery of course you can check out the brewery website in the description below you can follow them on facebook and instagram to keep up to date with the latest goings on and you can check out the rate beer and untapped pages to see all the different beers that they do so um yeah let's get on to the actual tasting of this beer itself then. So, as I mentioned to you earlier, this one is a 6.8% New England IPA. It's hopped with Nelson, Motoika and Mosaic. So, two New Zealand hops in this one, Nelson, Sovian and Motoika. Motu and Nelson, Sovian, of course, gives you these lovely... Um, sort of big white green grapey kind of notes. Motuka, if I remember correctly, is the one that's very much like a mojito kind of lime quality. And then Mosaic, as we know, is the kind of um, tangerine orangey one that you get from America. It's a really nice hop, that. But I do like the, the artwork on this, you know, picking the brains for new ideas, two breweries coming together. So I do wonder if this is going to be, um, if it's, um, you know, if this is a new sort of collaboration series that... Um, 
Aslan Beer Company are doing and they're going to do this with lots of different breweries. But yeah, nice artwork on this one and uh, like I said, this one comes in at 6.8% ABV, a double dry hopped New England style IPA this one. So, um, so yeah curious to try. This one incidentally is a one US pint can which in real people measurements also known as the metric system is 473 milliliters. I am always going to make fun of the American system with quarts and pints and stuff like that because it makes absolutely no sense to me. But yeah let's get this guy out and we will get on with the tasting then. So yeah let's get it out and into the glass. Once again a huge thank you to, uh, to Chris for sending this beer over to me. I'm sure this one will be a very interesting beer to review. But just look at the colour of that, that is crazy. But I do remember the other beer that I had from Aston, the Double Orange Star, that was a really very, very thick kind of beast of a, a New England IP. You know, it was just like gloop, basically, like juice. Um, but yeah, if I hold this beer up to the light, it is remarkably hazy. If I put my fingers behind the glass there, you can see this one really is a very, very thick kind of you know, juicy thing. One of my Swedish friends likes to call beer barley soup um, and you know this one is really just like you know oat soup or something like that. So you can see there's a solid one-third finger of quite a bumpy white head actually. That head is just fading away but if I sort of agitate the surface of the beer a little bit it kind of, you know, it comes back a little bit. One or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass and a few little ones just going up towards the bottom of that head there. But you know, overall, the appearance of this beer is not particularly surprising for a New England IPA. So yeah, really nice looking, but quite a bright yellow color, this one. And just going from the aroma that's kind of coming out of the glass and the can and stuff, this one, it almost smells a little bit sharp and sour. So I'm wondering if my sort of hypothesis about this beer before I opened it up was, uh, you know, was true. So we just need to see how we get on. But let's take a closer look at that aroma then and see how we get on with that. Oh, yeah, that's really nice. So yeah, straight away, um, this, this, this is a beer that really kind of piques my interest. You know, I was in New Zealand back in like 2015 and I've always been a huge, huge fan of the New Zealand hops like Rewaka, Rakao. Um, Motui, Kawaiiti and all of these kind of things. I've always loved the New Zealand hops. There's not too many breweries in America would use them from what I understand because you know they've got their own hops over there from Yakima and all of this kind of thing. Some There are some breweries in Europe that will use them but of course you've got a completely different type of beer down in New Zealand. It's somewhere that I'd love to go and live for a year or two and just you know do some try all these different New Zealand craft beers but um, the, the aromas coming off this beer, the fruity side of things, is absolutely lovely. It's quite nostalgic for me, actually. Um, so, um, straight away with this one, you're going to notice straight away that this beer is really quite floral and almost quite spicy. The green side of the hops really kind of comes out of the nose um, quite quickly. So to me, this comes across as quite a bright and spicy... Uh, I don't know if spicy is the right word, but it's got a very bright floral character to it, this beer. There's a little bit of grassiness in there and a teeny bit of earthiness, which is one of the kind of... Um, complexities or subtleties if you like that you'll get from mosaic. I've always found that mosaic gives you a nice kind of um it does give you a good big floral character so the Matuika will be um contributing quite a bit to that but it also gives you a nice little bit of earthiness. But then once your nose kind of almost saturates a little bit and just gets used to it, you get a lot of the lovely kind of fruity notes out of this one. So straight away you can notice the um the juicy limes, I think the lime is quite prominent in this one, that'll be from the Motoika and that's kind of pushing, I think that's the thing that's really pushing the kind of floral qualities out of the beer. Um, you also at the front of the nose get a little bit of that lighter kind of green white grapey sort of thing that you would always associate with Nelson Sovine and you can get some of that nice juicy tangerine orange from Mosaic as well. Um, so to me, really, when you first take this beer in, it's going to come across as being quite sharp, floral and limey. But then once your nose adjusts to it a little bit, you're going to get the juicy tangerines and the kind of white green grapey notes out of it as well. Um, there's maybe a, a little bit of a more kind of tropical subtlety to it, like maybe a little bit of pineapple or, or um, not papayas. Um, not apricot either. I think I think definitely pineapple to be honest with you. There is almost a little bit of pineapple to this beer as well. But the other thing is that the sharpness that this beer has, it does linger there a little bit and that's what's making me wonder if it could be 
a New England thing. I mean, over here in Scandinavia, we have Quake IPAs, which give you some other fruity qualities as well. So I've got a feeling that it's maybe the ye maybe they're using one of the Black Project yeast strains or something like that in this beer that's also giving you a little bit of that sharpness in there because there is almost a little bit of a kind of lemony zest that goes along with the the lime and stuff like that too. It's a really interesting aroma this beer. Um, but the malt base is fairly straight up on this one. Um, so you can pick up, there's a nice, you can pick up a little bit of the kind of wheaty smoothness in there. And the other thing that could give the beer a little bit of that kind of bite, if you like, in the aroma is the wheat. Depending on what type of wheat you use and how much you use, it can give you an almost um, astringent kind of thing with the beer. It gives you a really kind of sharpness. Um, nice oaty creaminess, maybe a little bit of a biscuity note as well. And um, overall, it's just a really nice kind of interesting beer this one I, I love it you know it's a bit nostalgic for me as i say with the new zealand hops but really quite a nice juicy smooth ipa underneath but then you've got this this kind of sharpness that comes out in the beginning that little bit of that floral limey bite which is really interesting so yeah in terms of the aroma i'm not quite sure exactly what to make of it it could just be like any sort of normal um, New England IPA that I've had before but it's got a little bit of a kind of bite to it if that makes sense so I'm curious now as to what made this beer particularly interesting to Chris but we'll have a taste of it and see how we get on so this one is the new beer idea number one a double dry hops New England IPA it's 6.8% from Aslan Beer Company in Alexandria in Virginia uh, just next to DC and the Black Project Sour Beer and Ferment uh, Fermentary or Sour Things whatever they do the Black Project Sour Beer Brewery from Denver in Colorado in America. Let's get stuck into this one. Slange and Skull, thank you to Chris once again. Yeah, um, that's really interesting actually. Um, the first thing you're going to notice about this beer is that it is very, very kind of light and smooth. Um, it actually, you know, when I think about this, it's actually a very light, drinkable New England IP. And I think I remember saying the same thing about the Aslan beers before. You know, I said that they were very, even though they were big, thick and boozy, they still had a hell of a lot of flavour to them. And I mean, when I was trying the Treehouse ones that um, that Chris sent me as well, I found that they were very light in their mouthfeel compared to the ones that we are having in... Uh, in Scandinavia, you know, like Stiegbjergets and Dugis and, uh, and Amar Breikus and all of these kind of things. It's really, this this beer to me, um, it reminds me a little bit as well of some of the Russian IPAs that I was reviewing recently. For example, the, the Jagovor and the, the Stambier. It's got a similar kind of feel to, to those Jagovor ones because it's very, very smooth and light but still packed full of flavour. That's quite interesting, actually. Um, I don't find this beer overly unusual and I'm not, I'm not quite sure if that's what Chris meant but he just said that this was quite different to other ones that he'd, he'd had before but to me this isn't such an unusual New England um, IPA and it's not what I expected. I did expect when it's Black Project in there that it would be a little bit kind of sour and things like that so I'd be very curious to know if it is one of their own yeasts. I couldn't find that information actually. But that is, I mean, this is a really just very nice, um, easy drinking New England IPA. You can tell it's quite fresh as well. You can definitely feel a little bit of that. You get the little bit of the kind of particle stuff floating around in there. You can feel there's a little bit of the hops. These little tiny particles of hops just floating around there. Because beer, of course, it's not a, a solution, if you like. It is a, a suspension, a colloid, whatever you want to call it. A little bit of chemistry for you there. My master's degree in chemistry is good for something. But um, you can really feel a few of those kind of little hoppy particles just floating around in this one. But this beer does get a big thumbs up from me as a New England IPA. This is really pretty nice. Um, and it's quite interesting. I've not tried too many New England IPAs with um, New Zealand hops in them when I think about it. I think a lot of them have been using Galaxy and stuff. So I've had quite a few with Australian hops, but not the um, New Zealand ones. And there's no natural competitors for hops in New Zealand, which is why you get so many different varieties. But that's a really nice, very smooth um, New England IPA. Um, I would say probably the closest thing I've had to this recently would be the ones that I've had from, from Jagovor in Russia. It's really quite similar to that, although I would say that this one maybe is a little bit thicker than those. Um, 
So that's an interesting point to make about this beer, to be honest. Those Jagovor beers um, are really, really quite interesting. Um, and this one, again, is very good. But having known Aslan Beer Company, I'm not surprised. This is a brew that a lot of people rave about. Mm. So yeah, let's try and break down this flavour a little bit then. So in the middle of your palate, you can feel that nice wheaty quality there and some of the bite that you get from the wheat a little bit of that astringency you can feel it's that the middle of your palate sort of sharpens up a little bit the further that you go into the aftertaste so it kind of yeah it pushes its way out a little bit and um, you can really feel that it's almost like a little bit citrusy in the middle of your tongue the further you go into the aftertaste but as I said some of the hoppy note the kind of hoppy particles and stuff are sitting there in the middle of your tongue too which is quite interesting um, so yeah, you can really feel that the malt base, you do get a little bit of that there. It might also be due to the, the yeast, so they might be using quite a high attenuating yeast or something, which is giving you a little bit of a citrusy note in the middle of the palate too. Um, so maybe that's what Chris was referring to as well, but I have had beers that are that are similar to this before. Um, in this, if you move a little bit further in towards the centre of your tongue, you'll get a little bit of the kind of oaty creaminess out of the beer as well. Um, and that, the oatiness sort of sweetens up a little bit the further you go into it also. Um, you, and there's a little bit of a, a biscuity note, I think, in the very centre of your palate too. Yeah. Definitely in the middle of your palate, yeah, there's a nice little touch of a biscuity thing, or cookies as the Americans would say, like McVitie's digestives, something a little bit like that. Um, but it's really just nice how that um, how that goes together. I like I, I do like how this the, the malt base and stuff in this one goes together, and it's got it's definitely got a little bit of bite, that sort of citrusy bite kind of thing that lingers into the aftertaste, um, which is it's really nice actually. I like beers that just that I always like the aftertaste of beers. You know, I've always been into my big malty beers being. You know, being Scottish, it's all about the malt for me. And um, but I love that when you get aftertaste like this, and it's 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 interesting. It's, it's not rare, but it's great when you come across a New England IPA or a West Coast IPA as well that has such a lingering aftertaste in uh, with the beers. It's always a bonus for me. I think I like how these beers um go together. But yeah, on the hoppy side of things, then back corners of the palate. Um, it's got a quite. There is a little bit of earthiness there. Like I said to you earlier, that's most likely to come from the the mosaic, in my opinion. It's it's, but it's it's not overly prominent, if you like. It's it's, it has a little bit of that, but it's not kind of battering away any of the other parts of the flavour. But as you come further forward along the side of the palate with this, pardon me, um, as you come further forward. You're going to get a nice little bit of floral aromaticity there, and um, it's got that. It's not quite as spicy as I would have thought from the. Um, from the aroma, but it's got a nice kind of, um, it's just got a nice little bit of bite to it, and then round the very front curve of the palate, the beer is just that little bit lighter and grassy, but then the fruity side of this beer is where it really gets a bit interesting. But yeah, so as I always say, the fruity part of a beer will come out in that little oily bubble that you get behind the front curve of the tongue. So if you go towards the back of that there, it's kind of interesting because you do get, if you go to the back of that oily bubble, you do get a little bit of a darker kind of note to it. And it's almost a little bit, um, it's like a very, very kind of sharp citrusy note. It's almost got a little bit of the kind of darkness that you would expect and pungency of like passion fruit or grapefruit or something. But none of the hops in this beer are really going to give you that from what I remember. So maybe it's just a little bit of the you know, the kind of bitterness and the acids and stuff like that um, from the from the hops and the little hot particles going around. But as you come further forward from that, it really evolves to be a little bit more tangerine and orangey. But I think generally, I find this beer to be quite lemon limey, to be honest. And as you go further into the aftertaste, you you know, as you come further forward, you've got that darker, almost slightly like passion fruity, green hoppy kind of thing there. Then as you come forward, you get a little bit of the tangerine orange from the mosaic. And then on the tip of the tongue, you start to get the, the big limey notes from the Matuika. Um, so it's really weird that how it's almost lemony and citrus, a little, citrusy a little bit in the middle of the palate. Some of that, as I say, might be coming from the yeast. Some of it might be coming from the 
you know, the fact that this beer is quite fresh and you've still got a big green presence from the hops, if you like, but then the limey notes are sitting on the edge of the tongue too, and almost as you push right onto the very, very tip of your tongue, that's when you start to get some of the white, green, grapey kind of notes that you would expect of the Nelson Sauvine. Um, but overall, as a, a New England IP, I really like this one. Um, I don't see... Um, too much kind of unusual about this beer and I'm not sure exactly what, what Chris as I say meant with this one but it's a very very good um, it's a very very good take it reminds me of some of these um, Jagovor ones and the Stam beer ones that I had as well from um, from Russia quite recently it's very similar to those um, it's just I guess maybe the unusual thing is I don't know how um, common New Zealand hops are over in the States but um, the, the limey I've always found that the New Zealand hops are a little bit lighter and more oily in terms of the fruity qualities than the American ones, for example. The American ones, I think, are a bit more juicy in their flavour profiles. Um, so maybe, I don't know if that's what he meant, but in terms of it being a New England IPA, it is really pretty nice, actually. It's a little bit lighter compared to some of the other ones that I've had. I think this is a bit lighter in its mouthfeel than the Double Orange Star I had from Aslan Beer Company before. But um, in terms of flavour profile, it is you know, kind of what I would expect from this style. It's really nicely done, uh, but I think the yeast probably is playing a little bit of a role here and giving you a bit of a lemony. This beer does have a little bit of a kind of lemony quality um, note to it. So it is kind of lemon limey and floral and bitey in the beginning, if you like, but then as it, it kind of mellows out a little bit, you'll start to get more of the green grapey notes. I don't think the tangerine is too prominent in this one. I don't think the, the mosaic -y, orangey notes are all that prominent in this beer. But um, to me, it comes across really quite nicely. This it gets a big thumbs up from me. This beer. So thank you to Chris for sending me this. This is a really interesting one to think about. So um, yeah, in terms of the the mouth feel, then. Um, yeah. Um, this beer, I mean, it's fairly it's fairly mid bodied. I think it's in the kind of mid, definitely in the middle range of things. It's bottom to middle end of, uh, of mid-bodied. Um, the carbonation is very, very smooth in this. I would say that this beer has a big creamy presence to it. I think this is really one of the creamier um, New England IPAs I've had, but it doesn't feel overly creamy, I think it's fair to say that. Um, in terms of the hoppy bitterness, I think this one might well be around the sort of 50 IBU mark. It definitely comes across as being a little bit heavier. It might be less than that right enough. Um, because of how fresh it is, um, it might just appear that way. That might because of the green presence still being there. But I think this is, um, I think this is maybe around fifty IBUs, maybe forty, something like that. Um, not going to blow the head off you in terms of bitterness though, compared to a West Coast IPA. Um, really nice um, fruitiness to this one. It's a bit sharp in the beginning, if you like, um, but not tart. Definitely not tart. Just a nice kind of. It's definitely got a bit of a lemon limey kind of bite to it, but then it gets a bit more juicy the further you go into the aftertaste. And the malt is, like I say, very very smooth with just a little tiny touch of uh, of sweetness to it. But overall, I'd say this is a really very very solid New England IPA. Not unusual compared to some of the other ones that I, that I've had, um, but I don't know how this would compare to a lot of the ones you'll get in the kind of Virginia, DC sort of area in the states. So maybe it's unusual for there, but I think for me this one is kind of similar to uh, to other things that I've had before. But it's a very very good beer nonetheless, and uh, you know certainly wouldn't hesitate to try more beers from either of these breweries. So hopefully I can do like a dedicated review to the Black Project at some point as well. So um, yeah, let's just leave it at that for this one. The new beer idea number one, a double dry hopped uh, New England IPA at six point eight percent from Aslan Beer Company in Alexandria. Uh, in Virginia near DC and the Black Project from Denver in Colorado, a brewery that I really hope I can check out at some point in the future. But um, yeah, let's leave it at that. Once again, thank you to Chris for making this beer review possible. Thank you to you guys for watching. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are both from Aslan Beer Company and from The Black Project. Hopefully I can return to these breweries at some point in the fairly near future. It's been cool to encounter Aslan again and to encounter Black Project for the first time. I hope you've enjoyed this review. Check out my social media and I will catch you guys very soon. Until the next time, stand just now and I'll catch you guys later. Make sure you check out Aslan and The Black Project. Stand you, let's go. Cheers.